This mini lecture is designed to show you how to calculate how much power at a specific wavelength comes out of a light source that essentially consists of many wavelengths. Now essentially a light source gives power over many different colors or many different wavelengths and the total amount of optical power in watts that comes out of the source is given by the area of the curve that plots the intensity as a function of wavelength. So that's shown by the green curve in the slide here and so the total amount of power would simply be the area under the curve as I'm trying to sort of draw here in red pen. And so what this first equation shows is that the total power is simply power as a function of lambda times each little step lambda and you do the integral of that. A more common way to write this is to remove the power term by some constant we call p that's, that's essentially wavelength independent and take that outside the integral and then integrate over what's called a line shape function g. And this is essentially exactly the same thing except you're making the simplification that the line shape g of lambda has an area equal to one. And if you do this you find this constant little p is just the total amount of power. And this line shape function is used in many different fields of science and engineering. A way to think about it is the line shape is the probability that a photon or a particle of light will be emitted from this light source at any particular color or wavelength lambda. And of course this makes sense since the probability of the photons being emitted is one. The photons were emitted so the probability they were emitted is 100%. And so the integral of this, the probability integrated over all the different colors you have is one. And that's the line shape function g. Now if we go ahead and do some simple math and look at some simple calculations with this, um, it turns out that the power in a given spectral range, say from wavelength 1 to wavelength 2, and so let's take a look at that by erasing this before, is simply the integral of the spectral power of those wavelengths, or simply uh, going with our line shape term. If we call our line shape here, let's go over here and let's choose a nice green color. Uh, how about that? Let's say we want to integrate from um, wavelength 1 to wavelength 2 over our light source, and we call this term g of lambda, the green curve there. Uh, the power in a given spectral range is just the integral of the line shape function, and that would be that shaded area there, multiplied by the total power that comes out of the source is given by this equation. Uh, many times you want to find the power at a specific wavelength and that makes things a little bit simpler. We can erase that and in a narrow spectral range essentially what you've got is you just want to know the power of that fairly narrow spectral region with width delta lambda. Um, and that's just the total power times the line shape function at our wavelength we're interested times the width of that area delta lambda. And essentially what we're doing with this approximation is we're just saying that the source puts out a pretty much constant amount of power over a narrow wavelength range. Uh, one other thing I want to point your attention to here is this, FWHM. And FWHM stands for full width at half maximum. And that's essentially how wide in wavelength, delta lambda let's call it, um, our source is. And this is often used to to illustrate sort of the spectral breadth or how many colors a source is emitted because many sources do put out somewhat symmetrical shapes like this. Now this may be a little bit confusing so what I'd like to do is I'd like to solve a problem to maybe illustrate how you would calculate the spectral power from a source. So let's go on to the next slide. And so essentially here's our source as before. The green line essentially either represents line shape, if the area under it is one, or the power put out by the source is a function of wavelength, and then the integral of that, the area under it, would be the total amount of power. But I'm going to assume it's line shape. And what we want to do is we want to know the power emitted over a certain wavelength range, delta lambda, 
at the peak, at this position, lambda naught. So that's what we want to calculate. How much power over a range delta lambda at the peak at wavelength delta naught? And so essentially, this calculation, right, is simply a calculation of, of calculating the area of the rectangle. So there's the area of the rectangle. And then dividing that by the area of the line shape, which we know to be 1, so that's a pretty simple calculation. Um, now here's where the problem comes in. That source power, or the, the, the line shape function, g of lambda, looks to be pretty complicated. It looks like some kind of weird Gaussian function or, or things like that. So in many of these types of calculations, for a first approximation, it's really easy to say that we're not going to do the exact calculation. Um, we're not going to go back and, and, and do that integral we saw on the previous slide, but we're simply going to approximate that by a triangle of equal area as just appeared on your screen there. And this triangle has base B, uh, full width half maximum, as you see there. Let's basically get rid of that G of lambda so that you can more clearly see. Let's choose a different ink color. How about bright green? The full width half maximum of the triangle. And so then Essentially, our problem becomes calculating the area of the rectangle compared to the area of the triangle. So what do we know about this? Well, and let's choose black ink because that's going to be, I think, much better to see this with. Area of triangle, we have a formula for, with one-half base times height, right, which if we look at this, that's essentially just the full width half maximum times g of lambda naught. Okay, great. So we're going to assume the full width half maximum is given, and we need to calculate g, the line shape function, at the peak of our source here. Well, how do we do that? Well, we know that the area of this triangle of line shape is equal to 1, because that's the definition of line shape. The area is always equal to 1. So the line shape at the peak is just 1 over the full width half maximum. And the full width half maximum is given in nanometers. So our units of line shape are always going to be nanometers to the minus 1. Okay. Well, now we know need to know the area of the rectangle. That's pretty easy to calculate. And that's just the spectral width we're trying to calculate, delta lambda, which is given to us, times g of lambda naught, which is just equal to delta lambda, times 1 over the full width of the maximum. And uh, this is going to have unitless area, since delta lambda is a nanometer. Ah, that's not unitless, is it? Because the full width has... Yeah, that's right. It's unitless. Okay. <coughs> now... If we want to know the fraction of power coming out of the source, that's essentially going to be, as we saw here, the area of the rectangle divided by the area of the line shape, which we know is equal to 1. And then we have to multiply that by the total power, as we saw on the previous slide. So power in delta lambda at, now let's do a real F here, at the wavelength lambda naught is simply equal to the total power, and this is the last equation on the previous slide, and this equation above that, times the area of the rectangle, delta lambda, times 1 over the full width of maximum, divided by the area of the line shape, which is 1. Or, in other words, the total power from the source times the width we're calculating divided by the full width, half maximum. And that essentially should give us what the power coming out of the source is. Now, if you shift that rectangle and want to do the calculation at a different point, uh, you just have a little bit of geometry due, and you just and you just scale the value of g of lambda naught. But this gives you an idea how to calculate 
the power over some region delta lambda from a source whose power is spectrally dependent. 